Transformation is for suckers. <laughs> transformation is for suckers unless we're really willing to transform. And true transformation requires that we speak clearly, directly, and loudly. What we're here to talk about today is that honest message, your message. You have a story to tell or a solution that needs to be shared. So how do you do that? With three simple rules, we guarantee you'll get your message out loud and clear. Rule number one. Money. Remove money from the equation. Money is simply a form of power. In fact, money is so powerful that it has its own gravitational pull. And in the same way that gravity warps space-time, money will warp your message. So it's a question to everybody in here, with whatever you're doing, would you be willing to remove money from the equation? In our project, this is what actually kicked off Beautiful Angle. It was a light bulb moment for us. Uh, we're both paid to work. Lance is paid to design. Tom is paid to write. But what we realized is that as soon as we accept pay from anybody, we hand the control of our message over to them. And it doesn't matter if it's a boss, client, or customer, because we all know this, whoever pays the piper calls the tune, right? But imagine you were a piper and you said, I choose not to be paid. With whatever it is you're doing, with whatever message you have to share, imagine how it might change if you said, I'm not going to worry about making money. How would that change your timeline, your methods, the people you chose to work with? A great example, Jack Dorsey founded Twitter in 2006. We all know what it is. It's an uber-democratic, web-based texting service. Since then, it's been used for what are called Twitter revolutions. The overthrow of governments with this simple tool uh, includes the, uh, the, the 2011 Egyptian revolution, the 2009-2010 Iranian election protests. Twitter still does not have a revenue model. But what Twitter does have are official bans from the governments of Egypt and Iraq, Iran. We tend to measure the success of a thing these days with how much money it makes by share price or IPO or box office. You want a real measure of impact? If the government bans you, you've had impact. So imagine, could you get to the point where you said, I'm going to set the need to, money, to, to make money aside? If you could do that, then you have achieved total freedom. You have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. We respectfully call this the freedom of the homeless man. It's the freedom to stand on the bridge of glass and shout obscenities at passers-by. It's the freedom to break into song. What the world needs now is love, sweet It's the freedom to stand on a news tribune box and preach about the end of the world. It's the freedom to stutter, the freedom to attack. Real freedom arrives when you destroy the need to be invited back. number two. Power. Demand an audience. In 1517, Pope Leo X was raising money for armies and artwork and hedonistic extravagances like his own pet elephant. He did this, one way he did this was by selling indulgences. Pope Leo was literally selling the forgiveness of sins. Well, 900 miles to the north, a hot-headed Catholic priest and theology professor thought this was offensive. So in bold, revolutionary language, Martin Luther wrote out his thoughts. And instead of waiting for permission or getting approval from his superiors, he nailed his 95 Thesis to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. Within two weeks, that thesis had traveled throughout Germany. Within two months, it had traveled throughout Europe. Martin Luther didn't wait for approval. He didn't wait for permission. He got his message out there. Before we succeeded with Beautiful Angle, we were in a band called Wallpaper Pie. Have you ever heard of us? Probably not. Now we do something different. We make posters. 
For the last 10 years, we've created posters every month using an old printing press, 1950s press with wood type and lead type and hand-carved images. And we don't wait for an audience. We, using staples and wheat paste, we go out there and hang our posters on telephone poles or on the sides of buildings. And we don't ask for approval, we just put them out there. Rule number three, desire. Tell your message to someone that's longing to hear it. Meet a need. One of our favorite places in Tacoma is King's Books, run by Sweet Pea Flaherty. What Sweet Pea, what Sweet Pea discovered wasn't the need for another bookstore. If he went out of business tomorrow, there'd be six other bookstores to take his place. But what he discovered was a need for a center for literary arts. And just so happens Tacoma is a city of readers. Sweet Pea was looking for his tribe of readers. So he offered up his bookstore and has, it has become a center for literary arts. In the last week, which is an average week, he hosted eight events in seven days. Sweet Pea has tapped into a need. So, three rules. Take money out of the equation demand an audience, and tell your message to someone that needs to hear it. This event we're at today is called TEDx Tacoma. It's not TEDx New York, it's not TEDx San Francisco, and it's certainly not TEDx Seattle. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Tacoma has something to offer that these other thriving cities don't. Tacoma needs you. You want to have an impact this city here is asking you to impact it. You want to get your message out? This city is longing to hear what you have to say. Tacoma needs your heart, though. They don't need your Paul Smith necktie. <laughs> and Tacoma needs your commitment. Tacoma doesn't need your Brooks Brothers suit because, frankly, Tacoma doesn't need slick. We don't need slick either. We just need to get our message out, and we're not asking for permission. Thank you. Yeah.